All right, so you watched the other video on uh, constraint problems, and this video is going to provide two examples for you to solve. So stop the video right now and try to solve this linear programming slash constraint problem, and then afterwards come back and see the answer. Hopefully you got that the answer was 20 scarves and 15 sweaters for a profit of $400. Uh, if you didn't stick around, I'll explain it. If you did, then fast forward to the other problem. So here the first thing we need to do with any of these problems is define our variables. So I, because scarves came first, I'm going to let x equal the number of scarves. Scarves. And then I'm going to have y equal the number of sweaters. And instantly within that first sentence, we already know it says, it says the word profit. So I know that's going to be my profit function. I know P is going to be equal to 5x, because $5 per sweater, uh, plus 20y. And because that I have that bigger that coefficient for my y, I kind of know that if possible, I'm going to try to get as many y's as possible. So now I have these other sentences, and they say you can make anywhere between 15 to 30 scarves per day. So that means I'm going to have um, x has to be greater than or equal to 15 and x has to be less than or equal to 30 and as I said in the other one you could kind of make that composite uh, inequality there but if you'd rather just have the two different lines go ahead but this just means between 15 and 30 scarves uh, the next one says you can make between 5 and 15 sweaters so y has to be greater than or equal to 5 and y has to be less than or equal to 15. You can never make more than 50, or 35 items per day. So that's going to be x plus y has to be less than or equal to 35 because you can't make more than 35. How many of each will you use to maximize your profit? Now we can graph that very easily but before even graphing it we kind of can already know our answer. In fact, we know that it's going to be the most amount of sweaters that I can make because sweaters has that um, positive, has that coefficient of 20. So if I can make 15 sweaters, which I know that I can, then I'm going to make as many sweaters as I can. So I know that I would actually have 15 sweaters and I would use that I would use that information to plug that in and say y or x plus 15 is equal to 35. And I would know that that meant that x had to be equal to 20 by subtracting 15 from both sides. So I kind of already know that point is going to be my solution, but let's still graph it regardless. So I'm going to use uh, green for my x's, and I know it's going up by 5 here. So 5, 10, 15. I would have that kind of as my line, which is a horrible line. Uh, and then 5, 10, 15. There I go for 30. Oh, goodness. Those are the worst. Those are the worst lines I've ever made. So I'll actually put in correct lines in. There we go. I guess I'll use black for that. If I can move it over. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to use... Uh, red for my sweaters and I know red is between 5 and 15 so between 5 and 15 so right now I kind of have that very tiny window and again this graph is way too large that I should use a smaller one but oh well um, and in here I also know that I have the intercepts, if I wanted to graph this, I know my intercepts for this line down here, this line would be uh, 35 comma 0 would be my x-intercept and 0 comma 35 would be my y-intercept. So I would have a point right there and then I'm going to have to erase this. Another point, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Right there and I can kind of connect all of those uh, lines very nicely. We use blue for that. 
And I know that this one, I, I'm dealing with that less than or equal to, right? I want to have less than um, that amount, if possible. Uh, so I'm going to shade everything underneath. And with a graph, this actually, with some graph paper, this becomes a lot nicer because we see that intersection point right at the point. I'll put that in dot, or that in black right here. And we see that that would be kind of our maximum value we would have because that's the maximum amount of Ys we can have while still having uh, those Xs. That'd be with Y being 15, it intersects where X is 20. So that would be my maximum point. In terms of profit, to figure that out, all I would have to do is plug it back in and I would get uh, 5 times 15, oh, 5 times 20, because 20 scarves, plus 20 times 15, and that ends up with me having a total of $400. Okay, so let's move on to the next video. Pause right here and uh, try out the problem. When you're done, come back to see the answers. Okay, so we are, uh, we tried it out, and we should have found out how many kinds of each baked good should you have to maximize profit. You should do four loaves of Irish soda bread and uh, two Kugelhoff cakes. Kugelhoff? Kugelhoff cakes. Um, what is the maximum profit? The maximum profit would be $14 if you're selling these baked goods. If you got that right, fantastic. Uh, stop the video and you're done. Uh, if not, stick around. I'll explain it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define our variables. So let's do that. And we will find that X is going to be equal to the number of Irish soda bread. And I know in the problem it talks a lot about flour and sugar, but we're going to use that flour and sugar to kind of compare the two because we know our profit, um, our profit sentence down here, make a profit of 250 for each loaf of Irish soda bread and $4 for each Kugelhoff cake, um, that is actually going to be our, that kind of defines what our variables are going to be because we need to have something in terms of those profit and we can't use flour and soda for the, our X and Y. Uh, so we would actually have P would be equal to 1.5 X plus uh, 4 Y. And I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but let's define that other variable. Our other variable would be Y equals the Kugel Hop, that should be an O. Don't worry, I'll correct that. Right. Well, there you go, it's an O. You can't tell the difference now. Um, but going on, we need to find our inequalities. And we're going to be dealing with these inequalities in terms of uh, we're making it with flour and sugar. So I know that my inequalities are going to be 2x plus 4y is less than or equal to 16. And the reason we have that is that deals with the cups of flour. So it's two cups of flour for the Irish, so 2x, and then four cups of flour for the uh, Kugelhoff. So that is less than or equal to 16 because you can make up to you can use up to 16 cups of flours, but you can't use more than that. Um, our other inequality would be 25 or a point 25 x plus y is less than or equal to three. And that deals with cups of sugars. Uh, the Irish soda bread uses one-fourth cup of sugar, whereas the Kugelhop uses uh, just one cup, so that's one Y. Then we use those inequalities, and we try to figure out our intersection point. So from there, from there, we get this beautiful graph. And I'll have to rewrite my inequalities, but that's okay. Actually, there's my, my profit statement is right down there, so I don't have to worry about it. But we can kind of see these intersection points. Um, the ones, the inequalities that I didn't include here were just that x has to be greater than or equal to zero and y has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's just simply saying that we're not gonna make negative amounts of bread. Uh, from there, we know our intersection points are gonna be at the y-intercept of uh, our line down here, our y-intercept, which was 0, 0,3, and our x-intercept of this top red line, which was right down here at 8, 0. And you can easily find out that the x-intercept for this one was 8, 0, 
and uh, 0 comma 4, which is how we can graph those two, whereas our other line had an x-intercept of 12 comma 0 and then 0 comma 3. Um, the one thing we don't know immediately by looking just by graphing those two, uh, if we had proper graph paper, we'd be able to easily see that uh, we would have an intercept or that the two lines would intersect at the point four comma two. If we didn't want to do that, uh, if we didn't want to kind of have that measure, we would instantly be able to either do substitution or elimination here. We would just rewrite these as two X plus four Y is equal to 16 and 0.25 x plus y is equal to 3. I would actually use substitution here and say y is equal to 0.25 or x or 25 hundredths x plus 3 and then plug all of that back in here giving me 2x plus 4 times the quantity 0.25 x plus 3 is equal to 16. The reason I would use substitution here is because it becomes a lot easier solving for y in the end. So that would give me 2x plus x plus 12 is equal to 16 or 3x plus 12 is equal to 16. Subtracting 12 gives me 3x is equal to uh, 4 and then I would have to divide by, oh no 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 that should have been a negative 0.25x. Sorry, you're all probably just screaming at the screen right now, just enraged. Um, so that wouldn't be a 3x. That would actually just be a x. If it'll erase x. There you go. There we go. No worries. We're okay. We got it under control. So x is equal to 4. Uh, plugging that back in here would give me 0.25 times 4 plus 3 or negative 1 plus 3, which is equal to 2. So that gives us the point 4 comma 2. Um, if we weren't sure already that that would be the solution, right, because we kind of have these four solutions, I can already, with this profit function, and I'm going to erase this work now, uh, with this profit function, I already know uh, that, well, I already know a few things, but I'm kind of already going to be guessing that this is going to be our best move because it has almost the most amount of y's and it also has a decent amount of x's so kind of the top right point there um, checking out those vertices though we see that plugging them in we find the with the point zero comma three or if we cook zero loaves of Irish uh, soda bread and three loaves of the Kugelhoff we get twelve dollars uh, if it was four and two we get fourteen dollars and if we use the eight and zero uh, we would also get $12. So our best deal is, that's the bell ringing, uh, four loaves of Irish soda bread. Our best deal would be four I loaves of Irish soda bread and two Kugelhoff cakes to maximize our profit of $14. Thanks for watching this video and checking it out. Uh, I will see you guys on Monday or whenever I see you. Bye-bye now.